G'day guys, Wasto here, Wasto's Garage. Today I want to share with you uh, basically my uh, first acoustic guitar I bought, and here it is. It's um, it's an Econow, but the um, the name has since faded away off the the headstock there. But um, it's made, it's an early one, it's made in Korea or something, quite some time ago. I bought it in a junk shop in Deer Park, a second-hand shop, Trado Rama, I don't know what it was, in the 90s, because I just needed an acoustic. And this is it, it's been with me ever since. So, um, this is not the current guise it was in. It's been modified a bit, and it's been around with me quite a bit. I've been to many, many campfires. As you can see, there's a bit of discoloration and blistering on on the guitar there from various campfires have damaged the exterior. But um, look, just to have, give a bit of a rundown on this Econ Owl, it was, it's a higher end guitar at the time, but a cheap one, but good quality. You can see just on the binding, it's bound on the edges, and that's three ply there. So that's uh, cream, black, cream, three ply. It's also bound on the back with just a single binding on the back, single white. You can see our age is, um, has taken its toll on it. Um, other modifications that I've made too, even the back here, the back cap is bound, which is fantastic. And looking at the fretboard, it's a rosewood fretboard, and the rosewood fretboard is also bound, and the headstock is also bound. I've done a bit of custom work this over the years to keep it going nicely. First thing I did was I installed a new set of tuners. That was probably 20 years ago, soon after I, I sort of got it. They're Grover in style, and they've been very reliable, and they've made a big difference to sound for this guitar. What else I did too was um, I changed the nut to a bone nut, and that's aged up over the years. I cut that nut myself and set the action height. I did that all myself and set it all up. You see the uh, the frets quite nice. It does pinch under one of them. Get good access to the 12th, 13th fret, and then that's it. Same as regular acoustics, dreadnought in style. Um, also added, I added a uh, a pickup type of system here. It's an EQ'd system with a volume. It's got a built-in tuner, so that was uh, installed there with an internal mic and a piezo setup underneath the underneath the saddle there was also installed so it's had a few upgrades it's had a few string changes the action is quite high which suits me and it's got quite a uh, quite a round roundness to the to the fretboard but yeah this is it I've taken this to many many events I've played with it live I've played with it over many a campfire since uh, since the mid 90s that's a little bit of wear there where it's sort of rubbed away and polished away and on the back here when I was traveling in the back of the ute uh, it's rubbed through the case right through the area there it's just sort of scratched right through and rubbed coarsely rubbed that off and you can see a bit of buckle worming there as well and this big gouge happened in the back of the car as well, in the back of the ute. Now, it travelled in the caravan too, really roughly. Uh, many years later, it got a case. But, look, it's still really good. It still plays good. The bridge is having some issues at the moment, starting to lift off at the back. But other than that, it's been a good, reliable guitar for me. And uh, travelled many a road, many a campfire. just as good as it sounds better than the day I bought it because I don't know maybe the woods tone up a bit but
there you have it. There's my first acoustic guitar. I've still got it. I won't get rid of it. Um, it's dinged up, scratched, and broken as it is. The inlays are just a plastic inlay in there. Very good. I've actually got my tag on there, customised by Wasney Designs, as it has been. It truly has been. Yeah, and uh, also it does require a 9 volt battery. With the other installation, you can plug it into whatever you like, you know, straight into a PA, and uh, yeah, it'll sound just as awesome. And there's just another uh, inlay in the back there of the binding. It's just fantastic. Thinking about the quality of the guitar that was made that many years ago and uh, was hacked around. So there you go. Many campfires, many bands. Used this exclusively pretty much when I was with a band called Tio. Talent is optional. Um, shout out to uh, Shane out there, who was uh, one of the driving forces in, of Tio at the time. And even to uh, not as much, but ex kamikazes before I sort of uh, went electric kind of thing. Dylan style. Since this guitar's uh, now sort of semi retired now, this guitar, and it will probably just live in the cupboard until another campfire comes out again. and. I don't know about this bridge, it's starting to lift off at the back and one day it'll go pong and we'll need some serious repairs. But until then, I'll keep using it as, as my backup acoustic, but I've replaced it with an even better, more technologically upbeat, up advanced guitar uh, called the LAG High Vibe, um, which is a fantastic guitar, but I've got a whole nother review for all that does. I mean, this thing's made it very easy because it's got a built-in tuner, so you just press the old button, Rooney, there, and um, it comes up with a tuner with an, with an arrow and the, with your EQ, volume control, power on off. Uh, yeah. Last one's on guitar. Okay guys, Wasto's Garage, about Wasto's first guitar, bought in the mid-90s, I can't even tell you when, 96 I would say, pretty old, got some wear, very happy with it, see it's yellowed off, what's it worth, not much, not much, not worth a great deal, but it is worth something to me, it's awesome, Wasto's Garage, not all about cars.